Hello. In a previous video, I showed you how to add a single button to your page and align that button left, center or right. In this video, I'm going to show you some more useful button settings using the new Flexbox options in Generate Blocks. When you use the buttons container, it adds a row of buttons. So if we find buttons, I'm using the Generate Blocks button block, not the default Gutenberg one. So it's generate blocks, button block. Now that's a single button, but we can wrap that button in a button container. And then we've got this option to add more buttons. So if add some buttons. Now these are added as a row by default and they are no wrap. It's default behavior to be no wrap. So I always turn on wrap just in case you're using a container that they would break where they can break out of the box. Now in the button container, I want to add some column gap and some row gap and that puts a bit of space between the buttons. Now the button container has these align items options. So if you want to align the buttons inside the container, you have to select the button container, not the individual buttons. So select the button container and then you can align to the left, center or right. And that's using justify content. Now, if I want that to be a, a stack or a column of buttons, I just click column. Now that will fill the container that it's inside. This container is 1240 pixels wide. So the buttons are 1240 pixels wide. If I want to, I can select the button container and give that a width. So we need to go down to sizing, width, I'm going to choose 300 pixels because 300 pixel buttons will fit on most small screens, mobile phone screens. Now, if I want to align the text inside the buttons, I have to select the buttons and then I can justify content and that will justify or align the text inside the button. So if I bulk select them. I can move all the text to the middle. If I want to align this, this, this is currently in a very wide container, but I can put that into the center by selecting the button container. And then I want to go to margin right auto and margin left auto. And that aligns the button container into the middle of its parent container. If you want it to be left or right aligned, you can just apply margin auto to one or the other. I'm going to delete that button container because I want to use a three column grid. So now I want to add a grid. And this is the generate blocks grid block. And I want to use a three column grid and in this column, I'm going to put some buttons. So add block. I want the generate blocks button block. You can search for it. And I'm going to use the button container. And then I can use this plus button to add buttons. Now it's a, a row by default, but I'm just going to add my buttons to start with. You can see that's breaking out of the box. That extra button is pushed too far. It's pushed into this next column because wrap is not default. So I select the button container, then choose wrap and the buttons will now wrap inside the container that they're placed in. I want to change this not to a row of buttons, but to a column. So I choose column. I've got the button container selected, choose column. 
and we're going to put some column gap and row gap. Now these buttons span the width of the container they're inside. So if it was inside this container, the buttons would span the width of that container. I'll just add some uh, gap to the grid block so that we can see what we're doing. So the buttons span the full width of the container that they're inside. Right, I'm going to remove this. Right, what I want to show you now is just paste some content in. Aligning these buttons if they're wrapped in a button container. In a previous video, I explained about pushing the button to the bottom using margin auto setting. Now this button is inside a button container. So to push this button to the bottom, I just take away margin auto and you'll see what I'm doing. I want to push that button to the bottom of the container so it lines up with this button. So what I need to do, first of all, the grid column, the container, which is the grid column, needs to be set to display flex so layout display flex and once that's a layout display flex make sure it's a column not a row once it's set to flex you can then select the button container and push the button container to the bottom using margin auto so you're selecting the button container and not the button if you select the button and set margin auto, it won't push the button to the bottom. You've got to select the button container. Right, I'll remove this and show you the next tip. Now, the important thing about these buttons is that they're set to grow to fill the container that I've placed them inside. Now, the container I set to a maximum width of 500. But if I select the buttons inside that button container, this flex child option is usually closed. So you'll have to expand it and it's at the bottom of the layout tab. And here we've got flex one. So if I remove that, I, I put that in earlier. Can you see that now that the buttons are ragged alignment? Now the way I built that, block of buttons. I added a new block to my page. I want to use the block inserter and I've got to search for buttons. I'm using the generate blocks buttons, not the default buttons, generate blocks buttons. And that's added a, a single button. So I use the add a button container and now I can use the plus to add buttons. I need to set this container to wrap because it's not wrapping at the moment. I just open list view, it's easier to see. I need to select the container, the button container, select that to wrap. I'm going to set column and row gap so we can see the gaps between the buttons and I'm going to change the amount of text in each button so I'll turn off the recorder while I do that now I've changed the text in the buttons so now we've got different lengths each button is a different length or a different width so what I need to do now I need to select the individual buttons I'm going to select them all and the layout tab. I want to go down to flex child flex and I want to change that from zero to one. And now the buttons grow to fill the box that they're inside. I'll remove that. Then we can have a quick recap of what we've done in this video. 
First, we set a column of buttons. We set the width of this. So it was sizing width 300 for the button container. To align the button text, I selected all the buttons and then used to justify content. But I select the individual buttons, not the container. And to align that to the center, I used margin auto. So I selected the button container and in spacing, I chose margin right and left as auto. The next thing we did was placing buttons inside a grid block. So this is a generate blocks grid block. It's got three columns and we just placed button container into any of the columns and the buttons will fill the width of the container that they're placed inside. So this is a wide column and so the buttons fill the entire column. These are narrower columns and so the buttons fill the narrower column. This is a single button inside a button container and to align that button I have to choose a button container and then I can use the justify content buttons to align the button. I've set that button to an actual size of 300 pixels. So if you select the button, then sizing width 300. I chose 300 because that will fit on most mobile phones. To align the text, select the text and then choose justify content. And to push this button to the bottom, the container that the button is in has to be a flex container not a default container, it must be a flex container. And then you select the button container, not the button itself, select the button container. And we want margin auto, margin top auto. And that pushes it to the bottom. It'll need to be at the side of a block that has much more content. So you can actually see the button move. If there's no empty space, the button can't move anywhere. To make these buttons line up nicely at the left and right hand side. I used a button block. I had a container that had a width of 500 pixels. I put a button block container in there. I did several buttons. I changed the length of the button text so that buttons would be different size. And then I selected all of the buttons. I want to select the individual buttons, not the button container. And then you set it in the layout tab at the bottom. There's this flex child option and you have to, ex you have to expand that usually. And I set that to grow one. If it was set to zero, they wouldn't fill the box, wouldn't expand or grow to fill the box. So if we say, select grow one, it will make all the buttons grow so that they fill the width of the container that they're inside. And the default behavior of the button container is row. So you can change the column, but by default, it makes rows of buttons. And don't forget, if you have several buttons in a row, you need to turn on wrap so that it, the buttons don't break out of the box because no wrap is the default setting. So turn on wrap and then the buttons will wrap to the next line if there's not enough room in the first line. And don't forget that these settings I've been showing you, these are only the settings to lay out the grids of buttons. You've got loads of settings to actually design the buttons. So these, these settings are just the, the settings for laying out grids and columns of buttons. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye for now.